This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So by far the most popular question has been, how do I do photography on YouTube and make money and how much do I make? Instead of putting it at the end of the video, let's just start with it so you guys can get on with your life. On YouTube, I have 33,000 subscribers. I get around 100,000 views every month and YouTube or Google is paying me $200 every month. So this means every time I get 1,000 views on YouTube, YouTube is paying me $2, which is nice, I guess. I mean, it's not something that's gonna pay the rent, but it's nice. But then there's also a bigger source of income for me, which is the Amazon affiliate program. As you might have noticed in my videos, when I start them or in the middle of them, I say, if you want this camera I'm shooting with or the lens I'm shooting with, I put links to Amazon in the description. So if you guys go and click on these links and buy them, I get a share of the profit. So every month I make Amazon $20,000 in profit, which sounds awesome, except that Amazon takes 96% of that and gives me 4%. So out of the $20,000 in profit that I bring Amazon every month, Amazon pays me around $800, which means that I make around $1,000 a month on YouTube. But then of course there's taxes, there's expenses like editing software and so on. So it's not really like a, a big, big thing for me yet. <laughs> Another way to make money on YouTube is through brand deals and sponsorships. I've said no to the sponsors that have asked to sponsor my channel because it didn't fit like my type of content. But for the first time I have a sponsor on this channel that I think is relevant to my audience. So let's roll it and then I'll get back to you guys and we continue the Q&A and find out who the winner of my camera is. This video is brought to you by Squarespace and I'm really excited about them supporting my channel because I've already built my fair share of Squarespace sites in the past for me and my photography friends and I've always recommended them. So if you're a photographer like me who wants to show your work in a professional way, then go to Squarespace and pick a template for your website from the large collection of portfolio designs and present your photography elegantly. Head to squarespace.com slash Frederick to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So I asked on social media for you guys to send in video questions and one lucky person will win my first ever street photography camera, which is the Ricoh GR2. And I will reveal who the winner is at the end of this video. Let's roll the questions. So my question is, uh, what is the most embarrassing or the worst mistake you've made while doing photography? The most embarrassing? I mean, one of my favorite photos it's really embarrassing. So this photo you see here, it didn't look like this when I took it. It looked like this when I took it. And I like edited it and all of that. And it's become one of my favorite photos. But the original photograph is pretty embarrassing, especially when it has become one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. How did you realize that you wanted to do photography for a living? Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I send you a big hug and a greetings from Guadalajara. Thanks for the question. I don't do photography for a living, but the thought has crossed my mind for sure, <laughs> like an Italian. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of uh, good things about being a hobby photographer and not being depending on a salary from photography. Because once you're dependent on a salary from photography, you might say yes to things you actually didn't want to do with your camera like going to your cousin's friend's wedding <laughs> that doesn't pay that well and it's just a pain. So I have the privilege to say no to a lot of gigs because I don't need photography to bring in money for the rent. I have a full-time job on the side. So I think there's a lot of pros to actually being a hobby photographer and using your camera for only the things you want to do and not because you need a paycheck. Hey Frederick, sorry if you hear a little bit of noise. I actually own a bird uh he's back here somewhere and he's playing in a box and that's the only way that i can keep him kind of a little bit quiet and occupied and my question is what started your interest in street portraits and street photography thanks for the question um i shot this photo that you see here when i was uh, in uh, a boat in a place called suchimilka with my mom it was shot on my phone i think it's around three years ago and that's what sparked my interest in street photography. I then took photos with my phone for a couple of months and then I bought my first camera. Which is the camera you see here that I am giving away to a lucky person in this video. Hey Frederick, this is Purvasha from India and I wanted to ask you, what does it take to make a good composition a great one? That's a difficult question. 
um, because I wouldn't know the answer, not because it's like it's difficult to explain. <laughs> it's difficult for me as well in that way. What I do to improve my composition, I think, is take a lot of photos. And I have a whole video on my channel where I talk about how to work a scene, which is basically you trying to take the same photograph in new ways. Hey, what up, Frederick? I'm Owen from uh, Vancouver, Canada. And I'm just wondering what you do for a job. Hey, Owen, thanks for your question. So my full-time job, I do digital marketing, and I've done digital marketing for the past 12 years, since I was 18, which means I deal with like Google Analytics, Google AdWords, and search engine optimization, and everything that can drive traffic from websites to apps and so on. So that's my full-time job. Hi there, greetings from the... Okay. Hey, man. <laughs> Hi there, greetings from the city of Querétaro. So my question is, what is the greatest lesson you've learned as a street photographer in Mexico City? Saludos. The greatest lessons I have learned in street photography? I don't know. I think a lot more people than you would expect are offered taking photos if you actually ask them. Maybe it's because I live in Mexico. Maybe it's because I'm a blonde here in Mexico. But um, yeah, when I was shooting in London as well, a lot more people than I would expect would be willing to post for a photo. and have this collaboration together where you're not taking just a photo for you, but they're getting a photo as well. G'day Fred, Michael Falkus here from Adelaide, South Australia. Um, love your content. Thanks for the opportunity to put out a question. I would like to find out how you thought with the limitation of working with the 5612 on the street after watching your um, most recent video when you dropped it, unfortunately. In a... This is a really bad sign. Like it's completely trashed. I hope everything is all right with the lens, beautiful lens I have on myself. Uh, what I'd like to see is uh, another video, if there's a chance, uh, where you, you go through the limitations of working with that lens on the street. Thank you. Keep up the great content. Love your work. So the 56mm 1.2 was the first lens I bought for my Fuji X-T3. And it's a great lens. And I use that lens when I know I'm going to be further away from my subject than normally. So whenever I shoot like buses, when I shoot events, Places where I know I can't go super close to my subject, that's when I use that lens. But you can also use it for street photography, especially you're, if you're like a more like a sniper type of guy than someone who is up close interacting with your subject. I think you can easily use it for street photography, but it's not going to be as fast as like a 23mm or a 35mm in the focus time. Hi, my name is Juan. I'm from Spain. And my question is, how do you feel about taking candid portraits of people on the street? instead of uh, asking them for permission. Damn, that's a, crazy, that's a crazy video to see. I hope you guys are doing well. Candid street photography where you don't ask permission versus street portraits where you are asking permission. I think I like both 50-50. I do a lot of street portraits because I think it's fun to interact with the people you're photographing. And I also think there's a big misconception. I think a lot of people don't think street portraits are street photography because you ask permission and therefore you're ruining the moment. But I don't think you're necessarily ruining the moment by asking permission. For sure, that will happen. But I also think sometimes you would create moments that weren't there in the first place. So let's say you ask someone for a photo, and maybe you can even work that scene a lot more by maybe taking a lot more photos than you would if you didn't ask that person. And sometimes I found myself taking photos that I don't think I feel good about taking. Sometimes I feel a lot better asking the person permission to participate in the photograph compared to taking like a really close up in the subway by someone who doesn't know the photo is being taken. Sometimes that doesn't make me feel that well. But I do both. And depending on how I feel about the subject and the photograph in general, I would either ask or not ask, depending on the situation. Hi, Frederick. My question for you is, if you could either photograph in digital or only analog, what would you pick? And also, thank you for creating this amazing content and inspiring me and lots of other people to do stuff and get up. And yeah, <laughs> thanks. Have a nice one and liebe Grüße aus Deutschland. Thanks for the questions. So if I had to choose between film or digital for the rest of my life, I would pick digital, I think. But if I could like edit the question a little bit, if I were only to do street portraits for the rest of my life, I might actually only do film. But if street photography, which is a lot more broad of a genre than street portraits, then I would pick digital. But there's something around running around with your film camera doing street portraits that makes you more selective and shoot more with a purpose. Whereas with digital, you take a lot of photos that you know in the moment are not great photos. Hey, Frederick. My name's Joseph from Edinburgh, Texas. 
and I was wondering what kind of jobs did you work growing up? And did you catch UFC 248 last night? Uh, yes, I did catch UFC 248. The main event was so boring, but the co-main event was one of the best fights I've ever seen. Shout out to both women, and Joanna John Jacek is a beast, man. When I was in high school, I worked in my mom's health store as the guy who was shipping our packages for our online shop. So I went to the post office with a lot of like bags with packages for people who ordered vitamins and tea and so on. And then I went and shipped them. And then it was when I was 18, I started working in digital marketing and I didn't get that university degree because I was so into digital marketing and I thought I'm not, there's nothing in the university that they can teach me compared to me working in agencies and actually doing the job itself. Hey, Frederick, I'd like to know what's the most redeeming thing you've done with photography for somebody else? The most redeeming thing I've done with photography for someone else. I wish I had like a good answer to that. I don't think I've done anything redeeming for anyone yet, but it's exactly what I would like to do more of in the future. Hi, Frederick. My name is Alex Chen from Manila, Philippines. Have you ever tried to develop a film with a compensate of three stop push? Bye for now. Thank you. So I've tried pushing a film three stops and uh, here is the result. Uh, it was when I just started out in film photography, but uh, yeah, it's something I would like to try more, like more pushing and pulling with film. Hi, Frederick. My first month to die there. Making up films in for photography or a lot of state. The most rewarding part for me in photography has probably been like walking around, like kind of a meditative thing where you just walk around with your camera and see what happens as a way to see new places that you wouldn't otherwise have visited without a camera. Hi, Frederick. How are you? I'm Carlos from Caracas, Venezuela. And my question is, how do you face the fear to be robbed or attacked on the streets when you are making street photography? Um, I don't think much about it, to be honest. And a lot of people ask me, like, is it dangerous to photograph in Mexico? And probably it is, but it's, I think it's like any other big city, like London, New York, Moscow, whatever. You just need to think about where you are and at what time of place you are where. Because for sure there's a lot of places where I would expect to get mugged. And I have been mugged in Mexico City, but that was just in the bus. And then I've been mugged another time when I went to a bar uh, where there was two people who came up with me and robbed me at, gun, at gunpoint. But that said, I've never really had much trouble photographing people in the streets. Yo, mate. So how do you decide that photography was your life? <laughs> um, I think after two months of taking this photograph that you, I showed you guys earlier, I knew that photography would be something that would be with me for the rest of my life. Maybe not professionally, maybe just as a hobby, but something I would do until I die. First, why you chose street photography as a photographer? Second, have your camera ever been seized by the army or police when shooting near them during a protest? And is there any law for a street photographer to stay safe capturing a moment in public area even if there's one in your country? Does the police obey them or not? Thank you. I don't think I chose to do street photography. I think street photography chose me, like, thinking about should I do landscape or street or portraits or so on. It was just what came natural and what I liked, so I don't know. I haven't had my camera seized by the police or anything or the military, but I have got my camera kind of, like, inspected when I was doing a street photography video in London. It's on my YouTube. I mean, and I remember when these two security guards who I thought were policemen came over and asked to look at my pictures, I thought I had to show them to them because they were police, but they were just security guards. And I'm not the best person to talk about law or how it impacts street photography because it's very different from country to country. And my point of view is I'm going to take the photos I want to take. And then if there's any problem with the person who I'm photographing, then we will take it from there. But I would rather ask for an apology than walk around not taking the photos that I want to take. Also, because I don't think that the photos I take is trying to make the person who I photograph look uncomfortable or make them look like in a bad light. So I think as long as you take photos that are cool and that if you were the subject of the photos you take, that you would also be fine with it. 
some photographers are more aggressive than others, but as long as you're doing it in your own way and you have like your own morals that you're cool with and you can look yourself in the mirror, then I would deal with the law afterwards. No, but in all seriousness, if I photographed in Europe, I would also read up a little bit more about how laws are because it's very different in Europe than it is here in Mexico. Hi, Frederick. First of all, I want to say I absolutely love your channel. Uh, keep up the good work, man. It's, it's great. Um, my question to you is about the educational side of street photography. My favorite of your videos, the ones where you give tips and tricks, uh, you know, approaching portraiture in street photography or shooting in certain locations. And I was wondering if you have any go-to books uh, that set challenges that would improve your confidence in different areas. I'm quite a good fisherman waiting for an architectural scene to be filled by a good subject and I'm starting to gain confidence in other areas, but I'm wondering if you have any suggestions uh, of where you can go to improve these areas uh, in a more uh, organized way. That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> thanks for the love, and I'm glad you like the content. When you're starting out doing street photography, I think it's a good way to like find like a background or a backdrop that you like and just wait for the subject to move in. I did that too as well in the beginning, and I think it's a great way to start. In terms of inspiration, there's a lot of YouTubers who do street photography, so there's a lot of content on YouTube. And there's also a lot of photography books I would recommend for inspiration. And I'll make a list right here of the books that I think would suit your needs. Hey, Frederick. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm actually a landscape photographer, and I'm looking to get into street photography. So my question is... What is the like the best way or what tips do you have to get over that initial fear of going out in the street and taking photos of strangers? You know, because um, when I go out, I kind of get a bit nervous approaching strangers, random people, depending, you know, they might um, have a funny reaction to the photos. So, yeah, what's your tips for that? Cheers. So I think I had a lot of luck in the beginning on how I approached street photography. So I sneaked a lot of photos in the beginning, like taking them from the hip and so on. But as I got more comfortable, I asked a lot of people and I got a high percentage of people willing to participate. And that helped me a lot. But of course, sometimes you, get, you ask four different people, they all say no, maybe they're aggressive or so on. And that can take like your spirit out of you. And, but then you can go next day. And then I always go out and take pictures when I feel good. I'm, if I don't feel well, I'm not going to go out and take street photos because it's not going to be fun for you or for anyone participating. But I also made a whole video about what to do when you're shy. So I'll link it up there, I think, and the, in the YouTube description. Then you can watch all of it. Hi, Frederick. Uh, my name is Christina. My question for you is, um, for the last couple of months, I've been having some sort of artistic block and every time I look at my photos I just feel like they're not good enough has it ever happened to you and if it has how do you get out of that rut how do you get the ball rolling again I'm really just looking forward to your answer I'd love the camera too but you know I'd really like some pointers and uh, yeah see you soon okay so what I do when I'm in like a when I don't feel like I take the pictures that I want to take it which is every time and always I know that I have taken photos that I like and I could do that again. But for sure there are limitations or somewhere limitations within your mind that makes you not believe in the photos you take. But that's just how it is. I think it's a part of it. And I think it's part of doing something creative is to put the bar really high yourself. Because if you're happy with what you're doing, you're probably not doing like pushing yourself anywhere anyways. So I think it's completely normal. I don't have like a magic solution to it, but maybe you could do like shoot more with friends because then you get their perspective, especially if they're really good photographers. Look at photo books or look at documentaries or documentaries of other photographers and see how they do it. I just bought this photo book that you see right here and it's all black and white. And after I saw this, I was like, I want to shoot more black and white film. And he gave me some like new inspiration. The other thing you could do is buy a new camera or a new lens, but uh, that's an expensive way to recharge your inspiration. Hola Frederick, mi nombre es Daniela y veo tus videos de YouTube y me gustan mucho. Mi pregunta es, ¿tú qué me recomendarías para de cámara como principiante para poder tomar fotos y que salgan bien? Um, so my, the camera I would recommend for people starting out is probably something like this, like this small Ricoh GR2. Something like this is nice. They also made like a third edition now. 
Um, and if you don't have the money to spend on like an expensive camera, I mean, I usually shoot everything on my Fuji X-T3 and then I have a film camera on the side. But uh, whatever works for you. If you have a phone, great, use that. And until you get the comfortability of shooting with the phone and saving up for a camera, if money is an issue, then uh, just use your phone. And if you want to buy a camera, just find something a little small, like any mirrorless camera from 2019, 2018 will do fine. And thank you guys for all the questions. There's so many. Hi, Frederick. I wanted What's to ask up? you, why did you decide to live in Mexico of all the places? Was it the culture? Was it the food? Me tus videos. Saludos de Chihuahua. Shout out to Chihuahua. <laughs> it's a state in Mexico I haven't been to that I really want to visit. And what got me to Mexico is I was, I was living in Russia with my ex, who is a Colombian girl, and she suggested, why not go to Mexico? And I said, why not? <laughs> Regarding the food, I really like the food here. But in Denmark, where I'm from, we have a lot of uh, immigrants from all different countries. So I, there's a lot of variety in terms of like... Uh, Iranian food, Turkish food, and everything you can imagine there. And I kind of missed that part about living in Mexico, but I do love the Mexican food. Que nada, Frederic, yo tengo una pregunta acerca de cómo aprendiste fotografía, cómo te acercas a la gente y le pides pues permiso para tomarle foto y pues acceden. <laughs> I'm not sure I understood that question completely, but let me answer how I understood it. So I think what you should do when you take pictures of people is that the energy you bring to the person you're going to photograph is the energy he will bring back to you. So if you come over and you're like, hey, um, I was wondering if I can take a photo, then you will probably get like a low energy, not that enthusiastic person. But if you bring some higher energy and more positive, I think the person who you're going to photograph is going to bring that energy back to you. Hi, my name is Kassen. The question is, if you could take a picture of a famous person, who would that be? Frank Ocean. And if you could meet a... Or Tyler, the creator. A photographer. Let's, let's put it this way. Your idol photographer or your guru photographer. Who would that be? In all cases, uh, I love your YouTube channel and I truly enjoy your Instagram pictures. Anyway, take care. Blessings from Cannes, the south of France. If I could pick any famous person to photograph, I would pick uh, Frank Ocean or Tyler, the creator. In terms of uh, inspiration, among other photographers, I like uh, William Klein and I like the portraits of Irving Penn. Hey, Frederick, my name is Ben. I'm a photographer from the UK. My question is, I was wondering if you were going to invest in some more of that portrait 400, because that video, yeah, that was, that was a good video. So I was wondering if you recommend that film, uh, especially because of the price, and whether you're going to buy some more to make more videos. Thank you, love your channel. I've already bought a lot more Portrait 400, and on my Instagram, I posted a lot more about the latest photos shot with Portrait 400. What I do right now, and what I will recommend people starting out with Portrait 400, is to set your ISO at like 320, something like that, in ISO, and then shoot it like, uh, just trust the light meter if you have it, because I had a problem with getting underexposed photos with my Portrait 400, and just setting my ISO at 320 instead of 400, as the film is rated to, had helped, has helped me a lot. Hello, my name is Victor and I am pretty, pretty new to photography. I would like to know more about that uh, decision of overcoming your fear and coming to going to some uh, foreign country and start working there, especially as a street photographer. Thank you. I mean, I've, I've answered most of these questions before in other questions, but what I think I do a lot is I, I'm very naive, so I, it, and sometimes it might be a little more dangerous than I expect in some areas at some times, and at some point I'll probably also get robbed for my gear, but that's how it is. I would rather not be scared and risk a little more than being super safe and not walking out and take the photos that I actually want to take. Hi, I'm Valti and I'm from Finland. I've been watching you for, I think, more than a year. And my question to you is that you usually photograph Mexico City and people there. But how would you handle a situation where your city is smaller and there's not too much to photograph there? What would you photograph in that situation? Hey Malte, I think what I would do uh, if I lived in a smaller city than Mexico City is I would focus on whatever that city had to offer. So maybe you have fields, maybe you have water, maybe you have beach, maybe you have um, whatever you have. You must have something. If it's uh, maybe you have woods, you must have something in your city that makes it 
or that could make it interesting. I think it's back again to finding people who have photographed uh, cities or um, subjects that you can find in your city. So do a lot of Google searches. Maybe there's a photographer who has documented his small city and that could give you some like new inspiration for what you can do in your city. But a lot of people think that you need like 50 people in an area to do street photography. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Like every photo you see, which is like a nice street photo, is usually one, two, three people max. Of course, there are exceptions, but usually you don't need a lot of people to do street photography. Sometimes a lot of people make street photography a lot more difficult. Hi, Fred. My question is, what exactly are you trying to say with your photography? Or what do you want people to take away with them after they've looked at your photographs? Hey, V, that's a difficult question. I think what I want people to take away with is that I want them to at least think that it's an honest photo. That's the first thing. It's a photograph you would like to look at. It tells the truth. And in the future, I would like to do more documentary and more maybe social photography or like documentary photography, something that has an impact beyond the photo itself. Hello, bro. Uh, just want to ask you, if, do you prepare to listen to music while shooting on street? So if I listen to music when I do street photography, it's like a 50-50. Sometimes it's low music so I can still hear the subject I'm talking to. Sometimes it's no music and sometimes it's full blast. <laughs> it depends on my mood and if I'm in the mood to interact, to interact a lot with the subjects I'm meeting or if I'm just walking around knowing I'm not going to interact with anyone today, then I have a nice playlist. Again, a lot of Frank Ocean, a lot of Tyler the Creator and a lot of folk music actually. Hola Frederick, eh, yo tengo una pregunta para ti, soy una fan de tu canal de YouTube y mi pregunta es la siguiente, ¿qué es lo que más te gusta de México? What I like most about Mexico and living here is probably walking around in a new country that is so different from my normal country, which is Denmark. But it's always cool to be in a new city that gives you like a culture shock where you see things for the first time. I've been in Mexico now for three and a half years, so I'm also thinking about new places to visit like Cuba or other places that will give me another culture shock. Hola, Frederick. Um, my question for you is, how do you set yourself apart from the other photographers in the world? How I set myself apart? I don't think about setting myself apart, first of all. Uh, I'm just taking the photos I like to take. I know more UFC fighters than I know famous photographers. So. I know that there's a lot of things that you can get from learning from looking at other people's photographs. But for me, I'm not where I want to be and I know where what I should do to get where I want to be by myself as well. So right now I'm not taking inspiration from that many people and I'm just following my gut feeling. And I also think that is a way for me to create photos that are not really inspired heavily of, upon what other people are doing. Hey, Frederick. How's What's going, up? Hey? I have a question for you. Do you have a photo you regret have not taken the most? Describe it to me. What the f what, what was that? <laughs> a photo I haven't taken. Oh yeah, I have one for you. I have one for you. There was a guy who was lighting a joint between two cars. And I just took my camera up to my face to take the picture. But then he looked at me and turned around and said, this is how you're going to get shot. And then I didn't take that photo, but I wish I did. Hola, Federico. Hi, Federico. Que pasa, away? I'm Carl. Yo soy Patricia. Uh, our question is, how do you go about building your collector base? Or how do you go about selling your photos? So I don't really sell my photos and I don't think much in monetization of my photography thing yet. I focus more on creating like a base of followers and then uh, I'll do prints and all of that at some point when I'm ready, but I'm not stressing about it. Also because if I had to ship photos back and forth and handle customer service and all of that, it will take away time for me to actually take pictures. So when you find a great subject, try to go really close try to step back a little bit and try to go all the way back. So you have one with all the scenery, you have one like medium, uh, medium close, and then you have one really close up. And that's a way for you to like experiment with a great subject in different ways. So I think that's my best advice is to try to work the scene as much as you can and think of new ways to take the same photograph and then the composition and everything will come as you go. Oi, Frederick. 
Can you help me out, man? Should I buy a Fuji camera or a Rico? I don't know. Seems impossible. I just don't know. Uh, yes. If you want the ability to change the lenses on your camera and record more video, pick the Fuji. If you care more about having a photo that, or have a camera that fits in your pocket and you don't care about the ability of not being able to change lenses, then buy the Rico. Hello, Travat, and greetings from Czech Republic. If you are planning to visit uh, Europe, and if so, when and why? Thank you for answering me and keep up doing good job. I will visit Europe very soon, I think in July, where my dad has a birthday and he lives in Norway, so very soon. Hi, Frederick. First, let me thank you for your great videos and advice you share. Um, I really love your work and it inspired me to start with street photography myself. I'm just starting with street photography and photography in general. Uh, I think I have a decent understanding uh, how to shoot with the correct exposure settings. But every time I go out, um, I get a bit overwhelmed uh, with all the ideas I saw in tutorial, tutorial videos online. And I'm not really sure what, which direction I have to go in. Uh, would you advise to go out with a certain technique in mind and try to capture that uh, technique and refine it? Or just go and randomly shoot whatever you feel like and see what the result is and go from there. Thanks for taking your time and have a nice day. It's a tricky question because when I started out, I photographed just whatever was on my mind and whatever I was drawn to. And I still do that today. But I do see there's advantages of like narrowing your focus and let's say I only do street portraits today or I only focus on light today. But I think it's very difficult because those photos don't, like whatever you're going to set your mind on, those photos might not come a lot. So you might waste a lot of time walking around trying to focus on that part. And what you maybe need more of is practice. So getting a lot of shots in. So I think I would recommend you to just find out what you are drawn to by going out and take a lot of different photos. And once you have your mind like narrowed about, let, let's say that you care about street portraits, then you go around one day only take street portraits. But I would probably just take my camera around my neck and take whatever photos I was drawn to. And once I got more knowledge about what I'm drawn to, then you can focus on that part. Hello, Frederick. My name's Joss. I'm from England. Um, my question for you is, what made you choose Mexico City specifically to shoot your photos? And will you ever consider moving anywhere else just for your street portraits and stuff? I would love to go on a trip where I get a culture shock, so somewhere completely new either Japan or Africa even, or somewhere where I don't know nothing about the culture and has never been, where you come with like fresh eyes and you see things for the first time. Hey Frederick, this is Heiko from Germany. I really enjoy watching your videos. Um, my question to you is, um, what are points that you see in a scenery you're observing on the street um, that makes you consider to take a photo? Uh, I'd really like to know that from you. Thank you very much. That's a great scenery. I'm not sure that I'm drawn to anything specific. I look, uh, I think it's a lot of like muscle memory that you just are drawn automatically. You don't really know why, but sometimes you just see something that you would like to photograph. That's how I feel. I don't go for like a specific person or a specific thing that I'm like always taking a photo of. I'm not sure, to be honest. I just take the photos that I'm drawn to. Hi, Frederick. My question for you is how do you think living in Mexico has changed the way you take pictures. I think if I didn't live in Mexico, I wouldn't have taken pictures because I started here because I just moved here and everything was new and interesting. So if I've stayed at the same place, I wouldn't have seen anything new and anything for the first time that I thought would be worth taking photos of. So I'm very happy that I got to Mexico and saw that for the first time, which made me want to take pictures. Hey man, do you have a list of locations you want to visit and can you give us a top five? I would like to visit Japan, I would like to visit Cuba, and I would like to go back to Russia, Moscow, to take pictures in the cold, cold, cold winter. Because I've only photographed more or less in like uh, great weather here in Mexico, which is <laughs> so horrible. No, but I would like to take photos in like tougher environments where there's a lot of snow or really cold and see how my photos would look like that. Hi Frederick, this is Frieda from Berlin. My question is, do you listen to music when you go out shooting on the streets? 
and if yes do you have any kind of favorite genre or favorite band for that and what do you think how does it affect your style of shooting cheers from berlin i do think it affects your photographs so if you walk around with rock music compared to if you rock around with like ballads or classical music you would take photos differently and i would actually like to try that in like a portrait environment because i just got this new studio here where i have different kinds of backdrops in the background to do like a portrait session with different kind of music that the model who i photograph likes as a way to change the style of how the photograph will look and to make the model who i'm photographing more comfortable by listening to the music that they care about ¿Qué fotógrafo o fotógrafa ha sido tu mayor inspiración? I don't have like a big inspiration in photography, but if I had to name one, it would be William Klein. Hi Federico, this is Manuel. I am a huge fan of you. So my question is, what do you like most? To find a really good taco del pastor on the street or, or to make a good portrait? Regards from Mexico. I, I want that camera. <laughs> Those two things are not mutually excluded. You can get a great portrait and also find a great taco in one day. Hola, Frederic. Me gusta mucho el trabajo que haces. Mi pregunta para ti es, ¿qué es lo que más te ha gustado estar tomando fotos en la ciudad? ¿O te gusta más en donde hay vegetación, en donde hay... My favorite place to take photos is on the street in Mexico City, maybe in downtown, or places I've never been before. So like new streets and new places to go. And that's the cool thing about doing street photography compared to, let's say, landscape. I can keep going to downtown and there will be new people every day. And if you're a landscape photographer, I mean, of course, the weather will change, which will make the photo change as well. But I think I'm very fortunate to do street photography because I can go in the same place every time, if especially if it's in a big city, and get completely new photos every time. Hola, Frederic. Muy buen día desde Puebla, México. Te saludo. Yo soy tu fan. Soy un principiante en la fotografía y algún día quisiera llegar a ser como tú. La pregunta es, ¿cuál es tu clave para el éxito? Saludos. Espero que me contestes. So my key to success, I don't have any keys to success. I think uh, I'm not the right person to answer that, but uh, I do what I, what I like to do, and I'm really bad at doing the things I don't like to do. So that's my master plan, to keep doing what I like to do and hope that everything will follow from there. Hola, Frederic. Mi nombre es Juan Granado. Vivo en Colombia. ¿Qué recomendaciones me das para ejercer, iniciar un, un proyecto fotográfico eh, con personas en la calle que particularmente trabajan en, en lo que es el empleo informal, el comercio informal? I'm a big believer in not planning that much. I think I think you should just do whatever. If you want to do like a street photography project or a documentary photography project about workers in like the informal economy then you should probably just start doing it whenever you can. When all of this virus thing is gone, then you should start and see what's going to happen. Like, I think you can plan a lot, but once you get out there, it's going to be very different from what you planned in the first place anyway. So I would just start. Hello, Frederick. My name is Özge from Turkey. I want to make a photo of the street. Because I don't know anyone who has seen the street photo. I want to share the street photo with them. I want to share the street photo with them. Her bir fotoğrafa baktığımda çok ayrı hissediyorum. Bazı fotoğraflarda mutlu oluyorum. Bazılarında hüzünleniyorum. Bazılarında keşke gerçekten o insanla tanışmış olsaydım diyorum. Beni çok özel hissettiriyor. Benim için içsel bir yolculuk gibi. Ve senin motivasyonunun ne olduğunu merak ediyorum. Sen neden sokak fotoğrafçılığı yapıyorsun? Umarım beni anlayabilirsin. Görüşürüz. Thanks for the question and thanks for sending subtitles to your question. I don't know what my motivation is in photography, to be honest. I just like to do it, I think. And I wish I had a better answer for that, but I don't really... I take photos because I like to do it. And then it's so new to me right now, so I don't know where it's going to take me or how, I, how I'm going to feel about photography in 10 years from now or in five years. Or I don't think I'm long enough in my photography journey to answer that question for you. Hola, ¿alguna vez has pensado qué va a pasar con tu obra fotográfica cuando ya no estés? Si será útil para alguien o si será recordado. I don't think I have a big need for my photos to be remembered after I'm gone. It would be cool like if you do it, but I think I take photos for the present. And then we'll see about the future. I'm not a big planner like you probably know already. All right, guys, that's it for all the questions. Thank you so much for sending all these questions in. And it's so cool to see all of you around the world 
following the channel and doing street photography. So that's great. We only have one thing to do right now, and that is to find the winner of this camera here. So good luck, guys. And I will notice the winner and I will ship this to your address. So I have all of your names written here on notes. I'm gonna throw all of them up in the air right now, see if I can catch one who gets the camera. Ready? Let's go. Here is the winner of the camera. Anthony Gonzalez, congratulations. You got a new camera.